All right, so I'm gonna talk about this next. Dun, dun, dun. This is my show and tell. I like show and tell at school. Is anyone like a big fan of the show and tell? Did anyone get really nervous about show and tell? Or you're like, you hated show and tell because you're so nervous about it? I think I was nervous about it as a kid. All right, guess what's in here? If you guess what's in here, I will give you my new allergy relief course. It's got, it's got, it has two ingredients. One of them's water. So I'm going to give away the water part. What is the other? Oh, who got it first? Let me see. It's Thistle, whoever put it in first. Paige, Paige gets the new allergy relief course. Okay. So last week we talked a little bit about plant-based diet. And can, can you guys see how green this is? How it looks, does it look like the greenest thing you've ever possibly seen in liquid form? I mean, it's darker than, it's about as dark as liquid chlorophyll. It's a little, yeah, it's, it's pretty wild that way. I'm gonna, do you, know, you guys wanna know what it tastes like? You wanna see my face? It's a little bitter. Yeah, it's a little bitter. It's a little astringent. All right, so what does bitter and astringent do in the body? These are, so then Ayurveda, there's six tastes. There's sweet, sour, salty, pungent, bitter, and astringent. Yeah, it does look like spirulina. The cool thing about thistle is it's free. Where a spirulina, how much does spirulina cost? Like that'll put a dent in the food budget. It really will. Yeah, so Kaylin says that it cools blood and liver. That's what bitter and astringent do. What else does it do? It's reducing. Paige says it's reducing. So that means that if you have excess tissue, it will help your tissue reduce. Whereas sweet taste, if you have like too much sweet taste, it, that will build your tissue. Sweet, sour, and salty builds tissue, pungent, bitter, and restringent, reduce the quantity of tissue. It means like they tighten it up too. So if like you have flab, so to speak, Pungent, bitter, and astringent will start to pull some of that um, excess moisture out. It dries up mucus. Yeah, that can be helpful. Does anyone have allergies? Does anyone have mucus? If you have mucus, yeah, so it can, it can dry that up. It squeezes stuff out of the liver. Yeah, it's interesting. Like sometimes, you know how when you eat something really bitter, you kind of want to spit it out? So for instance, I, gave, I, have a, I have a house, I've mentioned to this you guys before, but I have a household helper this summer, the teenage girl that lives next door. Was, she uh, got laid off from her job over in Teton, Grand Teton National Park, which is just right over the hill from me. And so I hired her to help me out. So I had her help me make this stuff yesterday. And we made like a gallon of it, it took about 20 minutes. It was pretty fast, way faster than like juicing celery. Way cheaper too, because we just went outside and ground the stuff. So... I gave my teenage friend, she's 18, I gave her a sip of this. And what do you think she wanted to do? Yeah, spit it out. So it's exactly. So with spitting, the fascinating thing about that on a cellular level, the cells release stuff. So if, if you think of like what cells, cells have like a few, few basic functions. One is nutrients in, and the second one is waste out. Nutrients in, waste out. So what bitter does is it, and astringent does it too, is it starts to push waste out. So if you were wondering like how it's detoxifying, how a lot of these wild yet invasive weeds uh, are, are super helpful to humans right now around the planet, is we have a time when there's like just more simply just processed food in our diets. And, and that processed food is gunky, it's sticky. It creates a stickiness in our cells. That stickiness, it coats the cell membranes and it creates stickiness in the blood plasma, in the interstitial fluid, and in the lymph, right? That's just like the liquidity of the basic liquidity of the body is that. So in Ayurveda, we call that rasa datu. If someone wants to type that in the chat, that'd be great, R-A-S-A. -A. So when you take something that's, that's bitter, like this, it helps to actually spit out that stickiness. It helps to get it on the move. It helps to get it on the flow back into the bloodstream, back to be purified and eliminated through our waste carrying channels, which are our urine, our sweat, our poop. And for ladies, our menses, we have that added bonus. Yeah. Okay. So a few questions on this stuff. 
uh, how long does will this last? I bet, I bet this is fine in my fridge for a good, I bet I could, I bet a week. It's gonna, the thing about juice, there's a few things about juice in general. You don't wanna have much air in your container with juice cause it's, it'll oxidize. Whereas a green smoothie, say you make a smoothie out of thistle. So you take your thistle and your apple and your lemon. That's a really good recipe. And you could, if you wanted this to be sweet, if I wanted this to be sweet, what are some ideas there? What's the, we can start with the zero calorie idea for those who are intermittent fasting. Cause my guess is that this has like, this is, is pretty clean. Yeah, stevia. So you could get liquid stevia and put a few drops in and then you know, if you can't handle it, right, then it'll sweeten that up for you. So when you, when you blend a smoothie, so if I just took the thistle and some apple and a little bit of lemon and some water and blended it up, what happens is there's a level of fiber that'll rise to the top because the fiber is lighter than the water. And then that fiber will create a barrier to the air. And so just the part of the smoothie that has exposure to air will turn brown. Has anyone ever noticed this? Like you can leave, there's a cool study, this woman, um, Victoria Botanko, who was, she's written a number of books, Raw Food Family, Raw Food World. All, she was like one of the early adopters to living foods um, in popular American culture. And she did a study on green juice oxidation versus green smoothie oxidation. She also wrote like the green smoothie book back I don't know, 15 years ago. So she was just trying to show, you know, what's the difference between juice and smoothies. So the fiber in smoothies is great. Like thistle fiber is, a, is probably just some of the better, you know, plant-based fiber out there. Uh, it's going to, it's going to last longer. So if you're going, say you're going camping or something for a week and you want to like make some stuff ahead of time, like having a smoothie is fine. Then when you open up the jar, just, and I'll put it in like a half gallon, half gallon mason jar. You just scrape off the brown stuff at the top and your nutrients in there haven't been oxidized. Now, the thing is, is with juice, you'll see it will, it will oxidize much faster. It doesn't have that fibrous layer on the top. You can put like a little piece of uh, whatever, depending on like your degree of hating plastic or not. You could use saran wrap or like a little plastic wrap, or you could use, they have these cool little uh, natural, food wrappers now. Have you guys seen those? They're like paper covered with beeswax. You could put that on top and that would slow the oxidation down. But anytime you've got air mixed in, it's going to start to deteriorate really quickly in terms of the nutrients or much more quickly. But I'll still drink this. I'll be, I, I have a gallon of it right now, so I'll probably be drinking it in a few days. So thistle isn't as bitter as dandelion greens. It's To me, it's actually, it's like not much, it's not I don't, it's probably not on the scale more bitter than kale. It's just more nutritive. So a lot of times when you start eating foods that aren't grown in conventional or organic conventional big farms, uh, what happens is you start to taste, you, you basically, you start to taste like mineral and nutrient complexes that you haven't tasted before. And so it's weird. And I talk about it like it's rewilding your palate. So there's this initial, whoa, this is wild, right? Like that's the experience with wild foods in general. It's like, yeah, it's pretty wild. Wild is a really appropriate word for wild foods. And then when you have them more and more, what happens is conventional food just starts to taste really conventional. And I've, you know, I don't know about you, but like I've never wanted to be described as conventional. I'd much rather be described as wild. So we have these layers of self and the core of the core or like the, the center, let's say that the, the center is just pure consciousness. And then there's layers of self and the layers of self are called koshas. I find this is really helpful. It's helpful to learn like again and again and again, because many of us were not raised with this perspective of understanding like the layers of where the physical body and the energy body and the mind body and the intuitive body and the bliss body, like how that all, how that all works together. Um, and this is, this is just a map. It's just a perspective. And so if we look at what's going on with wild foods, if we look at this, uh, I'll go, I'll go from outside to in, you can draw it either way. I'll go outside to in, which means I'm going from density to subtlety. 
So density is out here, and we'll say subtlety, subtle T. I'm not, is that a word? I'm not sure. Maybe I'm making up words now. Subtlety is in there. Okay, so the most dense, this is the physical body, is out here. And so if I look at eating more wild foods or invasive weeds, on the physical level, you have more nutrients. And, and we would look at that in terms of, we would look at that in terms of nutrient density. So pound per pound, this, this compared to, um, if I had kale juice here, if I had done the same thing with kale, uh, I would have a lot more nutrient density. I would have more uh, nutrient complexity too. So simply there's just gonna be more different things in here. Uh, we could also talk about, you know, vitamins and minerals and phytonutrients, plant-based nutrients. So there's simply more diversity and complexity. I wrote a little newsletter last week about, it was just talking about diversity in general. Uh, and I was, I was a bit kind of relating to social justice issues. One thing that we can learn from nature is that diversity is really is is really important and in the human body having a diversity of phytonutrients of plant-based nutrients really enables a nut a next degree of health uh michael Pollan's earlier work he's the he's that great writer that writes a lot about humans and eating and ecosystems and, and in the late and in the last year or so he's turned his attention to understanding uh medicinal mushrooms or uh whatever they're called, those, the, the psychedelics um, in mushrooms. And then his latest book is on caffeine. And he's just really interested in like the human body. And in his earlier, his earlier work, he talked a lot about how over the last hundred years, like what's happened with these phytonutrients and nutrient density and nutrient complexities is just plummeted. So that most people now on planet Earth eat an average of 30 plants a year, whereas like 100 years ago, we were eating over 100 plants a year. If you look back to Native Americans 2,000 years ago, they were eating about 1,000 species a year. So in the, in the diversity, you get a different level of nutrient complexity, which really feeds the human body. It mineralizes the bones. It cleanses the blood. It turns over fat tissue, keeps fat tissue super clean and clear. And good fat tissue means you have really great joint lubrication, something that's really important with anti-aging experience. Okay, so that's what's going on on the physical body as far as this, this, this uh, thistle juice. The next layer in, this is, the, this is the energy body. So this is the pranic body. The energy body works on the principle of pulsation. You could say they all do, but like particularly the energy body, it needs to pulse. The word for that in Sanskrit is spanda, that it has a spanda like spandex, it pulsates, it expands and it contracts. So when, even when you have the bitter taste, you have a much stronger contraction. Then you drink water, just pure water, and pure water then tastes sweet. And then you have more expansion. So in, in the energy body, like from the physical body into the energy body, there's a level of fluidity, fluidity, which is why when you're dehydrated, if anyone's ever been hungover, you've experienced a decrease in the fluidity in your energy body. Like it's literally like depressed, right? So the thistle juice is the opposite. You get that expansion of that pulsation. So there's no, you know, if you look at this, there's probably, I don't know how many calories are in this bottle. I'm guessing like less than 10, not much in terms of calories, but there's a lot of energy in it because of these wild tastes, because it's so strong and bitter and astringent uh, because there's water in there. And so it's hydrating. And what happens is when you eat this, you get some of the energy, you get some of the pulsation directly from the plant intelligence. So in Ayurveda, we understand that, you know, when you take in something that has more prana, and that's another word for this energy body is the pranic, the pranic body or the prana maya kosha is what it's officially called in Ayurveda. That, that there's the prana pulsates, that's its nature. The plant's intelligence can be measured in terms of how much prana it has. 
So I bought kale at the grocery store. It doesn't have the same amount or quantity or quality of prana as the wild thistle that's just growing in my yard around my shed. So there's a boost in that. And this is part of rewilding is like, once you've eaten more wild foods, conventional food can't hold a torch to it, right? You actually start to crave more of that, like that wild food experience. Why? Cause you're kind of, you want the high, you want the hit from it. Like some of people will get like kids will like a hit from uh, sugar, right? And adults to some degree from caffeine um, or other, other, psychedelic type things like whatever, even like THC, right? But, but wild food will give you that like, wow, I'm alive kind of an experience. And that's what is happening from the increase of intelligence in the prana maya kosha from having more wild food. Okay, then what's happening on the level of the mind. So this is called the mono maya kosha, the mind body or the mind sheath. And we could put emotions in here too. To me, what happens is the more you're in touch with your ecosystem, the more you experience the connection. So there becomes a connection between who you are and the ecosystem. So we could say the ecosystem is out here, is outside of you. Ecosystem, sorry. System. So there's more at this level, there's more of a connection. There's more of the experience of like, I am my ecosystem. Who I am is greater than just my body. And there's an experience of I am supported. So on the emotional body at this level, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very fascinating transition. It's hard to describe. And we can start to get this from the level of the five elements. So like I'm supported by earth, I'm supported by water, fire, air, ether, just direct support without actually ingestion. But by drinking thistle juice or whatnot, you do also get that experience of like, oh, wow. I mean, there is no shortage of invasive weeds on any continent right now in 2020. There's more nutrient density, there's more prana or intelligence in this type of food. And, and so you get to this experience of like, oh my gosh, the ecosystem is, is trying to nourish me. I'm supported. I am nourished. And so that's the emotional body experience, which is really different than uh, those of us who've been, I, I would say programmed, because uh, it does feel to me a bit like a program, uh, into a belief that you need supplements. Like you need things that are actually quite expensive. Right, because supplements in general are, are expensive comparatively to just like if you buy like a pound of oats or you buy a pound of spirulina, a pound of oats, organic oats will cost you about $2 a pound. In the United States right now, a pound of spirulina, good quality spirulina, my guess is upward of uh, $200 per pound. So there's that expense to that. Uh, whereas the thistle is free, <laughs> it's right outside. For many of us, it's right outside everywhere or chickweed, or purslane, or salsify, or dandelion, or any of these, any uh, miner's lettuce, it goes on and on. Amaranth, these are all the, the edible invasives. Okay, the fascinating thing about some of these plants, thistle in particular, is its root system. Part of the reason it's a permaculture plant is because it can send a root far beneath the surface of, of the topsoil. So you will also get the experience of I am rooted. And a lot of people need that experience right now. There's this hip word right now, particularly in, in business, in, in both small business and in, in large business, post-COVID economy. And it, this word, this popular word, five letters, I'm going to give away another allergy course for this. What word am I thinking of? Pivot! Pivot is kind of, I, I'm a basketball player. I was raised to pivot. By the time I was five, I knew what the word pivot meant. Um, and, and pivot, like you're changing directions. You're changing directions. Um, a lot of kids get pivoting wrong and they end up traveling. They end up like taking too many, too many, they take one step and they take another step and then you're not allowed to do that in basketball. So in pivoting, you're going like one direction, the other. It's different than rooting. Rooting is where you're standing still in place. And what a lot of people actually need to do right now is get more 
more rooted, more rooted in who they are, more rooted in where they live, more rooted in what they know and what they believe and to live from that truth. So you can get that from eating plants that have deeper roots. This is a this is a belief in Ayurveda that if you want to feel more rooted, eat more things that have deeper roots. Burdock root, that's another invasive that's everywhere. Uh, super rooted plant. It goes, its roots go down a couple of, of feet that are edible roots. This will, I don't eat the root, I eat the stalk, I eat the leaf. Okay, I'm almost done with my mini lecture here. Hang out with me for just a moment. So one more layer in, one, two, three, four, five. We have the intuitive body. This is your intuition. I'll highlight these just so that it's easier to see. So we have the physical body. We have the pranic body or energy body. We have the mind body, which includes the emotional body. And now we're onto the intuitive body. So your intuition, the function of intuition is fascinating because on the other side of the intuitive body, we have the bliss body, the Ananda Maya Kosha. This is a much subtler level of pulsation that's, that's picking up on the midline, which is pure consciousness. And it's translating that through the intuitive body into the mind so that you can think thoughts according to a higher level of consciousness or what we often call the higher mind. So bliss body. Okay, now we've got all five on here. So what happens when you eat more from, from your ecosystem is you will actually think, you'll think higher level thoughts. You'll be more connected to plants and to plants. It, it's interesting, like plant consciousness, humans have not been around for very long comparatively, right? If we look at how long plants have been around compared to how human, long humans have been around, I think humans are like, does anyone know the numbers on this? I think it's somewhere around 100 million years and plants are like six, six times that. It's really fascinating. So plant, it's actually, I think it's longer with plants. I'll post it on the forum because I can't, I want to get the numbers right here. So there's an experience of the intelligence of plants that have just been around for a lot longer that are not cultivated, that are not hybridized, that are just, they're just in, in the wild. And that starts to become part of your intuition. So what'll happen is you'll start to get a lot more curious about the elements, about what's growing around you and about what I might call like intrinsic solutions, like solutions that are surrounding us, but we may have been slightly programmed out of. Like a lot of us don't look to invasive weeds and think like, oh my gosh, that's the biggest energy and nutrient source available. Maybe we should use it. Instead, we, you know, we either plant gardens or we go to the grocery store to buy our food. So the bliss body is that which is in this very, very subtle level of I am the cosmos. I am free. I am free to create. I am free to uh, experience and also intrinsic abundance of like who I am is naturally complete and full and expanding. All right. So that's a little bit on the five koshas and, and thistle. Do you guys want to know how to make it? So all I did is say, I just took uh, gloves. Gloves are... This will, I, I think of plants as humans. I really do. Like they have personalities, like different species. Uh, this is a little prickly, right? She's a little tough to get to know. But once you get to know her, she's amazing. So gloves, really, really helpful. Scissors, also very helpful. Uh, and then I get a bucket, something that I can submerge the, the, I can basically put the thistle in once I've cut it and then wash it and then, now it's washed. Now I bring it to my kitchen. And I'm not like a thorough washer either. Like I'm fine with having a little bit of other stuff on there because all of that is going to diversify your microbiome, make my gut bacteria healthier. Okay. So I just go for the, that which has not yet flowered. So I decapitate the flowers. If a plant has flowers, I'll decapitate it and, and try to keep it growing more leaves in general. But in, in early spring, mid spring, uh, going for like the leafiest plants, cutting from the base, and I'll, I'll use the leaves and the stalks. And then I'll just cut them into about four inch sections, put them in my bucket, grab the garden hose, fill the bucket, submerge it, get, I'll use the scissors sometimes to like kind of like push them all under. Then I take the excess water, usually I pour it in my compost because it's so dry where I am, the compost always needs more water to decompose. 
Then I bring it in my kitchen. Now I have rinsed thistle. I fill up a blender and I just start by filling the blender two thirds full with water and packing as much thistle as I can in there, turning it on and it'll quickly liquefy. So I use a Vitamix. Uh, you don't need a Vitamix, you can use a regular blender. I'll put the Vitamix on low, I'll slowly turn it up, then it liquefies, then I stuff in more thistle. Do it again, then I stuff in more thistle. Do it again. I do that like about three or four times. That's how it gets so dark, is because there's so much thistle in here. Then I have a, a mix. Now I pour it through a nut milk bag, uh, if you have cheesecloth, you could use cheesecloth. But honestly, like a nut milk bag, it costs about six bucks. You can get them on Amazon. Probably one of the better kitchen investments you can make if you're into this stuff. Strain it through the nut milk bag. It's kind of fun. You squeeze it like you're milking a cow. And that's it. It doesn't, it really doesn't take that long. Now with this, I can use this as a base and then blend apples and lemons or whatever and have, make it into a smoothie later. All right. Uh, yeah, they're spiky. They are spiky. So leather, leather gloves are really good. Kinko makes a good glove, K-I-N-C-O. They make a really good hardy glove. Those like little plasticky garden gloves, forget about it. No, it'll just puncture like right through the plastic. So leather, leather's better. What I find, the more I work with thistle and nettle, nettle's the one with the little tiny spikes that people often get rashes from. The more I work with those plants, like I can pick nettle barehanded. We're friends now. And I think part of what happens is the more you eat things like thistle and nettle, it detoxifies your blood. In Ayurveda, what that means is it pulls excess pitta out of your blood. When your blood is not aggravated, when it's not overly, uh, doesn't have heat toxicity in it, your skin is much less reactive. You know how like two kids will go play in the woods and one will come out with like all sorts of bug bites and rashes and poison ivy and the other kid is like, fine. The other kid's fine. Why? They're both in the same environment. One kid usually is more pitta and has more pitta aggravation, which means they're going to be way more sensitive to sugar. Sugar is way more toxic to that kid. And so is any kind of food-based toxins. And so their, their blood has more heat in it. It's more reactive. So then their skin comes into contact with something, a, a mosquito bite, a spider bite, poison oak, poison ivy, nettle leaf, and it just reacts because there's so much already of that toxicity or of that heat in the blood. So the cleaner your blood, the less, the less reactive you are. Like the kid that gets like 30 bug bites or the adult that gets 30 bug bites at night sitting out on the patio, the other adult doesn't get any, same, same thing. All right. Mullen, I'm not that big on like, Mullen is good as a tea. If anyone else, like Mullen tincture, Mullen as a tea, those two are great things to do with Mullen. With COVID being a lung-based uh, infection, I would, I would, if I was like, a, if I had the COVID fear, I would be drinking Mullen tea. When I got back from Mexico in March, we have a little grow box outside and I live in a climate that's zone four. It's like really, it's cold most of the time. It snowed yesterday. Uh, so we have a very short <laughs> late growing season. I opened my box and there was mullen. Everything else was dead, but mullen was like, and I don't plant mullen, it's an invasive weed. Uh, and it was right there. And I thought that was really fascinating that mullen was showing up in my grow box when COVID was, was going into full blast. Yeah, so I like that. So Ellen, Ellen uh, Broderick saying Susan Weed. Susan Weed's a phenomenal herbalist of the last 30, 40 years. She says that if you pick nettle with full consciousness, she'll not sting you. Yeah, and David Wolf, who did a ton of stuff with um, superfoods and wild foods, he has this video on YouTube. It's kind of cool of like how to pick nettle and eat it just directly uh, without, without feeling the sting of it. So that's kind of a fun thing to do. You basically just, you're just careful. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So the same thing with thistle powder. I think there's a thistle powder on my yoga healer blog. Wash it, dry it, dehydrate it. And you can really, with thistle dehydrating, the stalks have a lot of moisture. So you can keep it in there for like a good 48, 48 hours and then put it in a Vitamix and turn it into powder. I often use my garage for that. I have a little table set up because it's, it can, making green powders is very, powdery. You have powder everywhere. All right. Are we a little more fired up now about invasives? Is anyone excited? Uh, yeah. 
right? 